And it's truly an honor and a privilege to introduce the woman of God of the hour. She is just, if I say the one word, everyone will know who she is. She is truly filled with the fruit of the spirit. And the one that comes out and it just speaks the most, the one that's contagious is her love. And I constantly tell her that her love is contagious. Just a hug, it rubs off, it just, you know, it comes to me. And I just, I just love her. I love her demeanor. She is just an awesome woman of God. Can you please stand and put your hands together for Sister Beverly Banks? Thank God for everything that's been said and done thus far. I thank God for everyone under the sound of my voice. I just want to thank God and give God honor. He is such an awesome God. I think about all his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. On a nothing like me. Amen. Oh, dear God, and I want to thank God for our leader. Give it up. Anna says all the time to the, special, the best spiritual leaders, our very own bishop and, and first lady, and I just want to give a special recognition to our women's president, first lady. I thank God for you, first lady. I really do. Amen. I thank God for all our visitors, amen, a lot of new faces that I've never seen before. I thank God for you taking time out of your busy schedule to come be with us on today, amen. Thank God for my spiritual family, this best spiritual family in the whole world, and I really mean that, amen. I spend more time with you than I do my own natural family, so give yourself a hand for being Sister Beverly. Brothers and sisters, amen. I thank God for the musicians, amen, everybody in their respective places. I so love and appreciate every one of you, amen, and last but not least, amen, to my friend, amen, my covering, my prayer partner, amen, so many things all wrapped up in one, y'all know my nickname for him, he said I gave him a soft nickname, ain't nothing soft about that, amen, but Deacon Donald Banks, amen, I thank God for my husband, he is my sunshine, amen, that's him. That's what he is. God gave me that name for him. It was a lot of darkness in my life, but he came and he moved all the darkness away. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. And I thank God for the word. You know, we have a man of God that teaches and preaches the word. Amen. To keep us focused on our destiny. Amen. And I thank God for this man of God. You know, I was trying to think back. I... I moved my ministry from the Bible Church of God, West Palm Beach, to this ministry back in 2008. And I had gone through some things. Those of you that have heard me spoken before, I share some things with you, you know, being a widow, being divorced, making those fleshly decisions and getting those fleshly results, amen? And because of the word that's in the Bible, amen, that I read and study, but the Holy Ghost that's on our man of God, he preaches and he teaches that word to empower us to know who we are, amen, to know our identity. And any time, amen, he speaks a word, he gives a prophetic word, I just wait on it because I know it's coming to pass, amen. Everybody in here can probably give an account of something that the man of God said through the Holy Ghost. He's just a vessel that God uses where it came to pass. And I was thinking back in this lesson, I shared this with my husband, he talked, why you didn't tell me? But it just wasn't time, and I'm going to share it with you today. Whatever you do, always love and respect your leader. Always know who God has put over your life to cover you. Amen. We need a covering. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. And as spiritual children of God, men and women, we need a covering. And when I had first came to this ministry, somebody had kind of like came to me and said that Bishop said something about me. And, and it didn't sit right in my spirit, and I already knew that it wasn't true. But when God sets you in the place for you to finish and complete your destiny, the enemy always wants to remove you. He always wants to bring offense. He wants you to get offended so you'll leave your covering. Amen. So he can get you out of your destiny, get you focused from your destiny. And I said, Lord, you know, and I pray. I said, Lord, I know my bishop didn't say that. Amen. Like I said, I was new to ministry. Amen. So I really didn't know Bishop. And I don't spend a lot of time with Bishop now. Amen. But I know the spirit that God has put in him as my spiritual father. So I prayed. And I said, Lord, I know Bishop didn't say it, but I want to hear you give him a word to say he didn't say it. This is how I pray. When I want to 
hear something from God, I want to hear something from God, I need something from God, I pray. We have to spend God time with God in prayer. And God will answer our prayers. Went through that Sunday service Tuesday night. Now I'm going to tell you, God, give Tuesday night services a hand. God been doing some strange things in those Tuesday night sessions. Amen. We say it's intimate time with the bishop. But I tell you, the Lord been really speaking through our prophet, our man of God, in those Tuesday night services. Tuesday night, bishop got up that Tuesday night. This is back in 2008 now. We're in 2015 now. Amen. And bishop was teaching and preaching this out of nowhere. Bishop said, if anybody ever told you I said anything about you, don't you believe it. I don't talk about nobody, all right? And, and I know he don't even know why he was saying it. I don't even know if he even remember he said it, because it was back in 2008. But that was my confirmation, that the enemy was trying to get me out of my place of destiny. And from that time, 2008 to right now, even when I came to the ministry, I said, Lord, allow me to be a help to ministry. God set them as leaders over this ministry. And it's all our responsibility to come in and be a help, to be a witness. Share this good news, the gospel. Amen. And on Tuesday night service, Bishop, he went overtime. But it was so good. Amen. He was talking about power from on high. He was talking about how, you know, even in the early church, the church was established in Acts, the first chapter. They went in the upper room. They were told to wait for the promise. Amen. And then the second chapter Acts, you know, power from a high came, filled them with the Holy Ghost, and gave them power to go out and preach and teach the gospel. Amen. And he said something so profound. It was so much that was said. And I'm going to always stay in that area where, where the God has put my vision. I'm not going to never venture away from that. But what I wanted to use this morning, that the Holy Ghost laid on my heart to give to you. Bishop said so much, but he went down. He said, no matter what we go through, no matter what I go through, no matter what you go through, we are the apple of God's eye. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm the apple of God's eye. Amen. He says, no matter what we go through, that we are always the center of God's attention. And when he said that, it just kind of, my baby just leaped in my stomach. You know, it's like in my spirit. It's like no matter what we go through, we can say nothing, we can do nothing that would take us from being the center of God's attention. But we serve a jealous God. Amen. We serve a God that wants to be the center of our attention also. We live in this world, brothers and sisters, but we're not of this world. We, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We have to make a difference. The world has to see a difference in us. That's why we come to church. We come and get instructions. We come and listen to the word of God. We come to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so we can go out and we can share this word. Amen? So if, grab your Bibles. Turn with me to Acts, the third chapter. And right in the area where Bishop was. Amen? And there's a couple of principles that God gave me in my study time to encourage your heart. I'm going to always say what my bishop say. I don't have to struggle to try to get a new revelation or anything. Amen. And this is a word I want to call to your attention today. The word is attention. The definition of attention is the act of watching someone or something. The act of state of applying your mind to something. To notice. To observe. Amen. And the thought that I want to leave with you today has God gotten your attention? Now that's a question for you. We already know that we are the center of God's attention. Now God wants to be the center of our attention. Amen. We got to battle with all this stuff. And it's a women's service. I, I'm talking to my sisters, but my men, I want to encourage everybody. Women of God, we got to pray like we never prayed before. We got to stay focused on the things of God. Amen. Because we're living in a world where God just want to just use your life. And that's all our purpose as men and women of God. But God want to use our lives to bring him honor, to bring him glory. It just can't be a song that we listen to. Amen. It has to be a, a way of life. God wants to take our lives and bring him honor and glory. And Acts the third chapter, first and tenth verse, it said, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Now, at this particular time, the ninth hour being 3 p.m. So the men of God was going up to the temple. Amen. They had a relationship. And the way they had a relationship with God, they had gone out, they had preached and taught the word. Amen. 
They were telling souls to repent. It was in um, Acts the second chapter where 3,000 souls were saved because Peter, amen, and the apostles went out and they, and they preached the word of God, amen. 3,000 souls were saved, amen, because they paid attention to the word that the men of God was teaching and preaching. So now here it is. They're giving their self that intimate relationship. When it comes to prayer, it has to be one-on-one -on -one with you and God. God wants your attention, amen. So they were giving their self. Amen, to God in prayer. And it was the ninth hour, it was 3 p.m. Now, this wasn't the first time that they had prayed. Amen. But they were going back to the temple again to pray. We have to constantly pray. And in the second verse, it says, And a certain man that was lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which was called beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Now, the man was looking for help. And I can tell you, in this day and time that we live in, it's just sometimes, as men and women of God, we're going to need help. And we should be able to come to the house of God, to the temple, the place of worship, to get that help that we're looking for. Third verse, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked arms. Now the men was going in, and the men of God got the lame man's attention. Amen. Now this lame man was laid at the gate daily, it said. But this particular day, they got his attention. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Basically, they were telling the man, all right, give us your attention. Amen? And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. The lame man came out. He wanted the attention of the people. He wanted a handout. He wanted help. But on this particular day, he was going to get a complete blessing, a complete healing. He didn't know what he was going to get, but in the midst to being at the place of worship, being at the temple. I'm telling you, if you come to the house of worship, if you come to the temple, you're going to get what you're looking for. But we can't tell God how to do it. Amen. We have to pray by faith, believe God, and know that he's going to do it. But we can't tell him how to do it because he knows what's best for us. A lot of times we want certain blessings. We want things in our lives as believers. Amen. God knows what's best for us. Amen. And then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I give, I give thee in the name of Jesus and never. Rise up and walk. Now look at the Holy Ghost. Look at the power from on high. Amen. Power from on high came down. Amen. Peter said, silver and gold we don't have. The material thing, the materialistic thing that you're looking for, we don't have. But such as we do have. That power from on high that Jesus has put in us, such that we do have. Amen. From, and in what name? In Jesus' name. Rise up and walk. And Peter, and you know one other thing that I like about the scripture text, men of God, women of God that I was looking at. In verse 7, it said, and Peter took him up by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Just a couple of principles. Peter and John was going to the temple. They were going together. Amen. Peter said, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have. Peter reached out his hand. All right, John was standing right there. John didn't get jealous. You know why John didn't get jealous? Because they were on one accord. They had the same heart. They had the same mind. Their attention was on the same thing. Amen. And as men and women of God, as the church, our heart, has to be on the same thing. Our mind has to be on the same thing. Amen. We have to be on one accord. We have to have all things in common. The same principles that was used in the early church, it hasn't changed. We have to follow the same principles, the same guidelines. Amen. And in the midst of that, one other thing. You think about Peter left, remember? All right. He denied Christ. Amen. He had to be restored. Now you look at John. John was with Jesus to the very end. John was at the cross with the mother Mary. John never left. But how about they came back together? And I'm sure John was not the type, oh, no, I need to lift him up. You left. You came back. No. That wasn't his mindset. Amen. They came together and worked ministry as one. Amen. Each one had gifts, talents, and abilities. And God used those gifts, talents, and ability to save souls. Like I say, in the book of uh, uh, the second chapter of Acts, 3,000 souls were saved. One said in saints. 
And if you flip over, I think it was Acts the fourth chapter, like the fourth verse, 5,000 souls were saved. Amen. 8,000 souls because the people saw and they heard. And these men of God, they had given their attention to the things of God. And they wanted to be saved. They saw the power from on high in these men of God's lives. In the women of God, it says that up, and, and you don't have to go there, but in the, in the second chapter, the 42nd verse, it says, they continued steadfast in apostle doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking the bread, in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonder signs done by the apostles. And they were all that believed were together and had all things in common. Amen. They had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all the men as every man had need. And they continually daily on one accord in the temple, in church. Amen. Breaking bread from house to house they eat. And their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. They got the people's attention. Power from on high came on these men and women of God. And they got the attention. All them same people that crucified Jesus said, what must we do to be saved? And they preached the gospel to them. They preached that same Jesus. That same Jesus that you crucified. That same Jesus that you didn't believe in. And it hasn't changed. Now, believers, as men and women of God, we got to go out and preach the gospel. The Jesus that empowered me. The Jesus that saved me. In my study time, I started thinking, Lord, where would I be? if you hadn't got my attention. And I shared with my testimony, I was a club girl. I loved the club scene. Now, can you imagine at 53 years old, I'm still in a club, still trying to shake it like I can break it. That was like 30 years ago. Now they're saying drop it like it's hot. I'm 53 years old, I'm trying to drop it like it's hot. And it's really not, not no more, not at 53. So it comes a time in your life that you have to change. Amen. You have to allow God to get your attention. We cannot allow this anything and anybody to get our attention. It's all kind of religion. I thought about Oprah, like when Oprah's show came on probably about 20 years ago. She had the Winer Brothers on her show, and Oprah was talking about Jesus. She had the Winer Brothers sing this song, Millions Didn't Make It, but I was one of the ones that, died, that did. And now here it is years later, Oprah talking about we don't need Jesus. We could be our own God. What happened? She lost her attention. She took her focus off the things of God. She got her money. She got her prestige. But I tell you, her money and her prestige cannot get her into heaven. Oprah going to have to confess, I believe in Jesus. It's for God I live. It's for God I die. Her money can't save her. She has to refocus. God has to get her attention again. Amen. And it said that immediately, amen. His feet and his ankle bones received, received strength. Again, from his mother's womb. He wasn't in a car accident or, or something happened. He came from the womb. His mother womb that way. So just think about in your minds, saints of God, this man had never walked, so it wasn't really no blood running, no blood vessels, no, no bones, no strength. But because of power from on high, immediately a miracle came. Immediately, this man had never walked before. And don't you see all these people, they knew this was the lame man. Laid at the gate daily, laid at the gate yearly. Amen. But it said immediately, amen, his feet and ankle bones. It was a miracle. That was power from on high. And it said he leaping up, he stood. He walked with them into the temple. They say he was walking, he was leaping, and he was praising God. Because he got his deliverance. All because of the power from on high. He gave the man of God his attention. The man of God was giving God their attention. That's why they were going to the temple for prayer. And then it said, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was him that sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what what which had happened. Now look, they knew <laughs> in their own mind there was no kind of way this could have happened unless God caused it to happen. Yeah. Amen. No people knew. Now, it's no kind of way miracles can happen in our lives 
and people don't know that God didn't do it. You're looking at a miracle. I didn't tell y'all everything. But I'm telling you, it's no kind of way I could be standing before you today. It's no kind of way I can have the heart to love God like I do and love people like I do if it wasn't for the miracle that God worked in my life by pouring his Holy Spirit. Okay, I heard the word of God. I confess with my mouth. I believed in my heart that Jesus died for my sins. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. And he came and he took residence in me. He came and he took residence in you. I'm looking at miracles. I heard some of your testimony, but I know you didn't tell me everything. So as miracles, as walking miracles in this world today, my brothers and sisters, we got to be a light. Amen. The world is looking for a light. The world is looking for a difference. Amen. We have people, if you know it or not, and you confess Christ, people are looking at you. They're looking to see how you're going to act. They're looking to see what you're going to say. They're looking to see what you're going to do. And, you know, and I have, I have women on my job. They'll come up, Beverly, what's your secret? And this is my secret. This is what I tell them. I have no secret. It's just my heart and my mind to do it this way. Amen. That's my secret. I just want to do it the B-I-B-L-E way. Amen. And when you love God, women of God, when you love God, men of God, Amen. Yeah, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight a good fight of faith. Amen. Because we have a destiny. Amen. And, and women of God, um, I want to encourage your heart. It's a women's service. Men, I love y'all. Amen. But I want to talk to my sisters. As women of God, we got to pray. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Put your hands up. All the single ladies. Amen. You waiting on a spouse. Get God your attention. God will drop that man of God in your spirit. God will drop you in that man of God's spirit. Amen. Wait and let God ordain a man of God to put the ring on your finger. Don't you choose him. Hey, learn from my mistake. Don't get caught up in that flesh. Repent and wait. In the upper room, they waited. They waited for the promise. We got to wait, sister. My single sisters, I love y'all. Amen. And I want to see God use y'all lives. I don't want to see you hurt. I don't want to see your heart broken. Let God do it. He would, you know what? Do you trust God? You come here and you hear the word of God that our man of God preach. Amen. Let God do it. He's able. He is able to do a seed of abundance. All we can ask or think. Give God your attention. And, and out of nowhere, uh-oh, you know, here come your man of God. But trust God. Give God your attention. Married women, all the married women, put your hands up. God gave you your husband. In order for you, amen, to continue to be the woman of God that called you to be woman of God, God needs your attention. God is first in all our lives, single, married. God is first. We cannot put our husbands before God. I love Deacon Banks. But God, <laughs> God is first. All right, that's my sunshine. That's my everything. That's my friend. But God is first. Women of God, married women. God is first. Amen. Before your husband, before your children. Amen. God is first. God has to be number uno, number one. He has to be priority. And then God will teach you. You keep your attention. On God. God will teach you how to love your husband. Amen. To honor him. To respect him. Now we can talk love. <laughs> we can talk love all day. But show me some love. I need to see proof. I need to see proof that you love me. Amen. God will put in you. Amen. The proof to love and respect your husband. Amen. And men of God. Love your wives. Just the word of God. Amen. Love your wives. Amen, the way that Christ loved the church. Amen. You keep your attention on God. Amen. I can't make Deacon Banks keep his eyes on God. I have to keep my eyes on God. I pray for him. Pray for your husbands. Cover your husbands. Amen. I pray that he continue to be focused on the things of God. But I can't make him do it. We all have a will. God's not going to never come against a man or a woman of God's will. We have to hear this word, the preach word. We have to read the word of God. We have to apply, apply, constantly apply it to our lives and use it 
It's a weapon. The word of God is a weapon. God has given us weapons. The word, fast, and prayer. That intimate relationship with God. It's not about a bunch of religion. It's about relationship. God wants that intimate relationship with you, my brothers and sisters, women of God. He wants that intimate relationship with you. If you're going to be all you can be, God wants you to give yourself totally to him. He wants all of your attention. Amen. And just a couple of, we don't, I don't have time to go through all of them. Amen. But I just want to give you a couple of scripture verses. Romans, the seventh chapter, verses 17, 17 through 19. And this flesh dwells no good thing. Women of God, fish yourself up, look beautiful as the beautiful queens that you are. Amen. But remember, no good thing dwells in that flesh. We need the Holy Ghost. We need God's presence. Get your hair done, get your nail done, your pedicure, your manicure, everything. Get all of that done. Amen. But always put your focus on God. Don't never take your attention off the things of God. Amen. Romans 8 and 1. Amen. We don't have any condemnation. Amen. There's no condemnation. Amen. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. God's spirit now dwells in us. It gives us power from on high. You, I, let me tell you, you cannot do it on your own strength, and I know you know that. Just in case you didn't know, amen, I've been in it now about over 20 years. Let me, let me help you out. We can't do it without God's help. We need the Holy Ghost. I tried. It failed every time. We need the Holy Ghost. We need to walk after the Spirit of God. Sunday school was awesome this morning, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We need love. We need patience. We need long-suffering. Amen. That's God's presence. That's the character and the nature of God that comes and resides in a believer to give us the help that we need. We can't do it on our own strength. Amen. Luke 18 and 1. We got to be persistent in giving ourselves in prayer. God wants our attention each and every day, our prayer life. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. We have to constantly pray. Have to constantly sleep after the things of God. Bishop was talking this morning in, in Sunday school about us delighting ourselves in the Lord. And then, like he said, we shout on that second part. Amen. And he'll give us the desires of our heart. Amen. But before the, des the desires of our heart come, we have to get God our attention. We have to delight ourselves in him. And you know, when you're delighting yourself in the Lord, he'll give you his, his desires. The things that God wants you to desire, he will put it in you. Amen. Acts the 12th chapter, verses 11 through 16, we have to always come together and pray. In that particular chapter, women of God were praying. Amen. Paul was put in prison. Amen. They were praying for Paul's escape. And in the midst of the prayer meeting, women of God was together praying. In the midst of the prayer meeting, it was a knock at the door. Amen. Amen. There was a knock at the door. In the midst of their prayer meeting, their prayers were answered. Women of God, we got to pray. Amen. And in my closing, I'm getting ready to turn it over to, um, to Bishop. I just want to say to you women of God, no matter what we go through, it doesn't, you know, we go through different battles. We go through different tests. Trials come. Temptation come. And, you know, and don't look at a believer's life that has, has continually geared herself to the process each and every day. Amen. This is the process. All right. It's Sunday morning. I'm going to go through Sunday. I wake up Monday morning. Okay, Lord, in my prayer time, here I am. You take over. What is it that you have me to do today, Lord? How can you get the glory out of my life today, Lord? I got to die. Me, myself, and I has to die. We have to die daily. Amen. And in the midst of dying daily, you pick up your cross. You pick up your spiritual cross. Amen? And you go and you live life trusting and believing in God. He needs our attention. We're the apple of his eye, saints of God. God wants to be the apple of our eye. And no matter what you go through, I'm here to tell you, God will bring you through. It's nothing so, so bad or nothing so harsh that we can do where we stop being the apples of God. I, amen. He loves us. His word is true. He said he'll never leave us. He will never forsake us. He's always with us. Now, if we decide that we want to pull away from God, amen, we decide we want to go do it our way, 
Amen. Like I said, he's never going to come against our will. But he's going to be right there waiting on us. We're going to still be the apple of his eye. Even though we have taken our focus, even though we may take our attention off of him, he's not going to never take his attention off us. He's made a way of escape. Amen. And, you know, and as a woman of God, don't never think, you know, you look at bishop life, you look at first lady life, you look at the minister lives. Even as a new convert, amen, that we just arrive overnight. It was a process that we all have to go through. And we started going through the process. This sin nature, you have to constantly fight against that sin nature each and every day. That's why we have to every day give God our attention. We can't say, okay, on Sunday we're going to give God our attention. And then on Monday, don't give it to him. He come to test. Amen. Now, how are you going to pass the test without God's help? You can't. You can't. We have to be serious about our Christian walk believers. We have to be a light. We have power from on high. We don't have to do it on our own. God gave us help. You know, and, and, and believe it or not, in this life, uh, other men think I look pretty good, too. Deacon Banks not the only one. And they let me know that, too. Amen. They come and they try to steal my attention. Amen. But because I love God, that's why God has to be first. In order for them to steal me from Deacon Banks, they have to steal me from God first. Not going to happen. Amen. Because God has my attention. He's first. He's number one. Amen. I'm sure some women, they know, and you know, we got women that think Deacon Banks look pretty good too. I know I'm not the only one. Amen. He got customers that move them. Amen. And they be blinking them eyes. I go right there and give them a quote. I'll be right there. Amen. Now, in order for them to call themselves trying to take Deacon Banks with me, they got to go through God first. Because Deacon Banks, he has his attention on God first. Sister Beverly number two. Thank God for that. We have to keep our attention. We have to keep our attention on God. Because I'm going to tell you, we got a destiny to complete. Every time we come in this church, Bishop has it right behind us, in front of us, as a reminder. God knows the thought that he thinks about us. Thoughts are good, not are evil. He wants to have a, a successful, expected end. But that devil, that enemy, that flesh, he wants to come and steal. He wants to come steal and destroy it's everybody's purpose. We all have a purpose. Women of God, men of God, we have a purpose. And our purpose is to keep our attention on God so God can get the honor, so God can get the glory out of our lives. So I'm going to ask you again, has God gotten your attention? That's the only question that you can answer, and you got to know. Amen. I'm going to give it over to the hands of our bishop. I love you, Bible Church of God. Continue to keep me in your prayers. Continue to pray for me because I tell you, I always pray for you and lift you up in prayer over into the hands of our bishop. Love you, Bible Church of God. Amen. That's the only thing that can cleanse us, right? And I, I heard a couple of things that, you know, you know, you know we say our church family, most time people are getting saved. You got you to gotta know that, that we're a growing family. When people get saved, that ain't nothing but growth, spiritually, amen? That's growth, spiritual growth. We're a growing family. And I said this, I said this, and thank you, Sister Beverly, again. Clap your hand for Sister Beverly, please. Yeah, thank God for the women's service on the day. Amen? My wife. All the women of God. And, and thank God for everybody, special ministries. Amen. God bless. I, I don't know if anybody in here that they don't know Jesus and and you want to give your heart to the Lord today. And we, we want to ask you to come forward, please. If you don't know the Lord Jesus.